The theology of Martin Luther was instrumental in influencing the Protestant Reformation, specifically topics dealing with justification by faith, the relationship between the law and the gospel also an instrumental component of Reformed theology, and various other theological ideas. Although Luther never wrote a «systematic theology» or a «summa» in the style of St. Thomas Aquinas, many of his ideas were systematized in the Lutheran confessions. Justification by faith This one and firm rock, which we call the doctrine of justification, insisted Luther, is the chief article of the whole Christian doctrine, which comprehends the understanding of all godliness. Lutherans tend to follow Luther in this matter. For the Lutheran tradition, the doctrine of salvation by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone is the material principle upon which all other teachings rest. Luther came to understand justification as being entirely the work of God. Against the teaching of his day that the believers are made righteous through the infusion of God grace into the soul, Luther asserted that Christians receive that righteousness entirely from outside themselves, that righteousness not only comes from Christ, it actually is the righteousness of Christ, and remains outside of us but is merely imputed to us rather than infused into us through faith. That is why faith alone makes someone just and fulfills the law, said Luther. Faith is that which brings the Holy Spirit through the merits of Christ. Thus faith, for Luther, is a gift from God, and, a living, bold trust in God's grace, so certain of God's favor that it would risk death a thousand times trusting in it. This faith grasps Christ's righteousness and appropriates it for itself in the believer's heart. Luther's study and research led him to question the contemporary usage of terms such as penance and righteousness in the Roman Catholic Church. He became convinced that the Church had lost sight of what he saw as several of the central truths of Christianity—the most important being the doctrine of justification by faith alone. He began to teach that salvation is a gift of God's grace through Christ received by faith alone. As a result of his lectures on the Psalms and Paul letter to the Romans, from 1513 to 1516, Luther achieved an exegetical breakthrough, an insight into the all-encompassing grace of God and all-sufficient merit of Christ. It was particularly in connection with Romans chapter 1 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God as revealed from faith, to faith, as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Luther came to one of his most important understandings, that the righteousness of God was not God's active, harsh, punishing wrath demanding that a person keep God's law perfectly in order to be saved, but rather Luther came to believe that God's righteousness is something that God gives to a person as a gift, freely, through Christ. Luther emerged from his tremendous struggle with a firmer trust in God and love for him. The doctrine of salvation by God's grace alone, received as a gift through faith and without dependence on human merit, was the measure by which he judged the religious practices and official teachings of the Church of his day and found them wanting. Luther explained justification this way in his small called articles. The first and chief article is this, Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, died for our sins and was raised again for our justification Romans chapter 3 verses 24-25. He alone is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world John chapter 1 verse 29, and God has laid on him the iniquity of us all Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. All have sinned and are justified freely, without their own works and merits, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, in his blood Romans chapter 3 verses 23 to 25. This is necessary to believe. This cannot be otherwise acquired or grasped by any work, law, or merit. Therefore, it is clear and certain that this faith alone justifies us. Nothing of this article can be yielded or surrendered, even though heaven and earth and everything else falls Mark chapter 13 verse 31. See also, Theology of the Cross <laughs> Law and Gospel Topic. Another essential aspect of his theology was his emphasis on the proper distinction between law and gospel. 
He believed that this principle of interpretation was an essential starting point in the study of the scriptures and that failing to distinguish properly between law and gospel was at the root of many fundamental theological errors. Universal priesthood of the baptized According to some interpreters, especially Philip Jakob Spener, Luther developed the notion of all believers being part of one body as a means to claim the priesthood of all believers. While the notion and meaning is somewhat unclear, this concept was clearly developed in opposition against a prevailing medieval division of Christians into spiritual, the hierarchy, and temporal Christians. The laity. In this view, all Christians are priests. In the eyes of God. This notion is common to all Christian denominations generally labeled as Protestant. <laughs> Simul justus et peccator Topic. Latin simul, simultaneous, plus Latin justus, righteous, plus Latin et, and, plus Latin peccator, sinner. Roman Catholic theology maintains that baptism washes away original sin. However, concupiscence remains as an inclination to sin, which is not sin unless actualized. Luther and the Reformers, following Augustine, insisted that what was called concupiscence was actually sin. While not denying the validity of baptism, Luther maintains that the inclination to sin is truly sin. Simul justus et peccator means that a Christian is at the same time both righteous and a sinner. Human beings are justified by grace alone, but at the same time they will always remain sinners, even after baptism. The doctrine can be interpreted in two different ways. From the perspective of God, human beings are at the same time totally sinners and totally righteous in Christ totus, totus. However, it would also be possible to argue that human beings are partly sinful and partly righteous partum, partum. The doctrine of simul justus is not an excuse for lawlessness, or a license for continued sinful conduct, rather, properly understood, it comforts the person who truly wishes to be free from sin and is aware of the inner struggle within him. Romans chapter 7 is the key biblical passage for understanding this doctrine. Luther also does not deny that the Christian may ever improve in his conduct. Instead, he wishes to keep Christians from either relying upon or despairing because of their own conduct or attitude. Topic. Sacraments and the means of grace Topic. Topic. Two kingdoms Topic. Martin Luther's doctrine of the two kingdoms or two reigns of God teaches that God is the ruler of the whole world and that he rules in two ways, both by the law and by the gospel. God rules the earthly or kingdom through secular government, by means of law and the sword. As creator God would like to promote social justice, and this is done through the political use of the law. At the same time God rules his spiritual kingdom, in order to promote human righteousness before God. This is done through the gospel, according to which all humans are justified by God's grace alone. This distinction has in Lutheran theology often been related to the idea that there is no particular Christian contribution to political and economic ethics. Human reason is enough to understand what is a right act in political and economic life. The gospel does not give any contribution to the content of social ethics. From this perspective Lutheran theology has often supported those in political and economic power. Topic. New Finnish School. Topic. Finnish scholarship in recent years has presented a distinctive view of Luther. Tuomo Mannerma at the University of Helsinki led the New Finnish Interpretation of Luther that presents Luther's views on salvation in terms much closer to the Eastern Orthodox doctrine of theosis rather than established interpretations of German Luther scholarship, Mannerma. S. student Oli Pekka Vinio has argued that Luther and other Lutherans in the 16th century especially theologians who later wrote the formula of Concord continued to define justification as participation in Christ rather than simply forensic imputation. Vinio concludes that the Lutheran doctrine of justification can deny merit to human actions. 
only if the new life given to the sinner is construed as participation in the divine life in Christ. The faith that has Christ as its object, and which apprehends him and his merit, making him present as the form of faith, is reckoned as righteousness. The Finnish approach argues that it is due to a much later interpretation of Luther that he is popularly known as centering his doctrine of human salvation in the belief that people are saved by the imputation to them of a righteousness not their own, Christ's own alien righteousness. This is known as the theological doctrine of forensic justification. Rather, the Finnish school asserts that Luther S doctrine of salvation was similar to that of Eastern Orthodoxy, theosis, divinization. The Finnish language is deliberately borrowed from the Greek Orthodox tradition, and thus it reveals the intention and context of this theological enterprise. It is an attempt by Lutherans to find common ground with Orthodoxy, an attempt launched amid the East-West détente of the 1970s, but taking greater impetus in a post-1989 world as such dialogue appears much more urgent for churches around the Baltic. The new Finnish interpretation has been challenged because it ignores Luther roots and theological development in Western Christendom, and it characterizes Luther's teaching on justification as based on Jesus Christ's righteousness which indwells the believer rather than his righteousness as imputed to the believer. Kolb and Aaron 2008 argue that these views ignore the radically different metaphysical base of Luther's understanding and that of the Eastern Church, and they ignore Luther's understanding of the dynamic, recreative nature of God's Word. In the anthology Union with Christ, the new Finnish interpretation of Luther the topic of Osiadrianism is addressed because the Finnish school is perceived as a representation of Andreas Osiader's doctrine of salvation through Christ's indwelling the believer with his divine nature. See also Apology of the Augsburg Confession Augsburg Confession Book of Concord Consubstantiation Formula of Concord Luther's Large Catechism Luther's Small Catechism Treatise on the Power and Primacy of the Pope Martin Luther's Views on Mary Criticism of Protestantism Topic. Further reading Topic. Althaus, Paul. The Theology of Martin Luther 1966-464 pages Bagchi, David, and David C. Steinmetz, eds. The Cambridge Companion to Reformation Theology 2004-289 pp. Bainton, Roland H. Here I Stand, A Life of Martin Luther 1950-386 pages Bear, Oswald, Martin Luther's Theology, A Contemporary Interpretation 2008, 354 pages Brendler, Gerhard. Martin Luther, Theology and Revolution 1991, 383 pages Jerish, B. A. Grace and Reason, A Study in the Theology of Luther 2005, 188 pages Kolb, Robert. Bound Choice, Election, and Wittenberg Theological Method, From Martin Luther to the Formula of Concord, 2005-382 pp. Cram, H. H. The Theology of Martin Luther 2009-152 pages Leninger, Paul. Luther and Theosis, Deification in the Theology of Martin Luther 1999-388 pages McKim, Donald K., ed. The Cambridge Companion to Martin Luther 2003-320 pages Osborne, Thomas M. Faith, Philosophy, and the Nominalist Background to Luther's Defense of the Real Presence. Journal of the History of Ideas, Vol. 63 No. 1, January 2002, pp. 63-82. Paulson, Stephen D., Luther for Armchair Theologians 2004-208 pages Trigg, Jonathan D. Baptism in the Theology of Martin Luther 2001-234 pages Wengert, Timothy J. The Pastoral Luther, Essays on Martin Luther's Practical Theology 2009-380 pages Zachman, Randall C. The Assurance of Faith, Conscience in the Theology of Martin Luther and John Calvin 2005, 272 pp Notes 
Topic: 